There's a passage where the Buddha asks Sariputta if he takes it on faith that the five strengths lead to awakening. And Sariputta says, no, I don't take it on faith. I know. That's because he had developed the strengths and learned how far they could take, take him. Now, for a lot of us, we're not there yet. We have to go on faith. This is something a lot of us don't like to hear. We've been burned by faith or issues of faith in other traditions. But there's a certain amount of faith or conviction you need to have in the path if you're going to practice it. Used to be that people would say, Buddhism is a religion that doesn't require faith or belief or conviction. But that's simply a matter of if you want to ascend to it, it seems reasonable. But that's as far as you're going to go. It doesn't require much faith or conviction. But if you're going to actually put it into practice, if you want to know that it's true, you have to start with some conviction, because it asks a lot. You have to change the way you act, change the way you speak, change the way you think, change the way you relate to yourself and relate to other people. It's a very thorough training. And if we decide that we want it to be proven for us before we undertake the training, it's never going to happen. Actually, we have to prove ourselves to learn whether the Buddhist teachings are true or not. We have to be true to turn our conviction into knowledge. We have to be true. In other words, we have to look at where our behavior is not measuring up and then bring it up to the standard. Part of this requires, if you're going to become someone who can pass judgment on the teachings, you have to be the kind of person whose judgment is reliable. And this is one of the reasons why we practice meditation, so we can make our judgment more reliable, make our gaze steadier, and our sense of what's really a defilement in the mind, a lot more subtle than it's been in the past. So it's in this way that we're proving ourselves. Remember, too, that the, the path is what you might call a truth of the will. It's the truth of the observer. It's something that's supposed to hold true across the board. But who is going to observe it? People who actually put it into practice or people who actually follow it. You have to put your own element of wanting it to happen before it can you can really develop it and test it. Of course, you're not going to know until you've actually completed the path, whether it works or not. But the factors of the path come together. That's when you can know. Okay, does this path really lead there or not? Does it really lead to a deathless? Did the Buddha describe something that really exists when he talked about the deathless? That's something you know only when the path is developed enough so the factors come together. It can provide that opening. Do so you want to look into yourself? Do you have the quality of truthfulness within you? Be the sort of person who really can gauge the path. It's thinking like this that helps nourish your effort. Because in the five strengths, conviction leads to persistence. But it's not just conviction on its own. There has to be that desire to, to really know, to take it beyond just conviction, if you're going to be persistent. And one of the ways of motivating yourself is to think about this quality of truthfulness. How true are you in following the precepts? How true are you in developing concentration, developing discernment? And all the big and little qualities of the mind that go along with the path. You want to check yourself all around to see if you really are following the path, or if there's some big blind spot that you've got. So you have to look at things from all angles, and test yourself from all angles as well. And you realize that the element of conviction in the path 
is something you just can't sit there and watch. It pushes you into action, because after all, this is a path whereby you have to do the work. No one else is going to do it for you. And you realize the consequences of not doing the work. Here's the possibility of putting an end to suffering. And even before you put a total end to suffering, you can begin to see, as you put the path into practice, a lot of forms of suffering are falling away. There's the stress of the path, of course, having to put it into practice. But a lot of the really heavy forms of suffering that come from not following the path, that come from not observing the precepts, of having a mind that's not really concentrated, you can see that those are falling away. And so the path makes sense, and it begins to give you at least some indication that maybe this is where you really do want to put your effort. But as the Buddha said in that analogy of the, the elephant, the elephant hunter may see signs of a big elephant, of a big bull elephant, but he's not really sure, because some of those signs could be something else. So you have to keep following, following, following. You have to put things into practice. You have to put the effort in. That's an element of wisdom. I talked in the past about how Manichan Lee is talking about the, the qualities of mind that you bring to mindfulness practice. For him, the wisdom quality is ardency, which is pretty much the same thing as right effort, combined with heedfulness. In other words, you put your whole heart into trying to bring into being the qualities that the Buddha recommended into abandoning the ones that he said had to be abandoned. It's wise to do that, because if you don't do that, how are you going to know? Not only how are you going to know what, whether the Buddhist teachings are true or not, how are you going to know what your potential as a human being is? Here the Buddha says, it is possible for human beings to put an end to suffering. They don't need any help from any outside, outside power. And it is possible to develop your own qualities. You've got the potentials within you. To what extent are you going to actualize those? It comes down to your truthfulness. Do you really want to put an end to suffering? Do you really want to test your potentials, or would you just rather coast through life? and leave this question unanswered. So to learn the truth, we have to be true. To learn the truth about the Dharma, to learn the truth about ourselves, we have to be as true as we can, as circumspect all around in our practice as we can. We have to prove ourselves. And it's only if we're up to the mark that we can be in a position where we can prove the Dharma. So take that as inspiration. The Dharma asks a lot, but it promises a really huge reward. And at the very least, you develop qualities in yourself that take you in the right direction, pull you away from a lot of suffering that otherwise you'd be creating for yourself. The question simply is, how far are you willing to go?